It's backwards. Ah, 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 ah. Boo. This is where I boo myself, right here. And I lost one of the quick release things. My boy, look what you did to my boy. You massacred my boy. So what I've got for you today is something special. Justin, my friend, we, we go way back. He works in the VFX industry and he is a supremely gifted individual that's been working in VFX since the dawn of time. And he is not satisfied with the status quo ever. He is always looking to tweak and tune and, and mess with his applications and squeeze as much as possible out of his computer. Hi. Isn't it insane? It is. He's bringing in his machine. So he works at a, a pretty big studio. They do a lot of really cool stuff. You've heard of the stuff that they've worked on. It's legit. And uh, they've got some older machines. They're, he's bringing in a machine that was last upgraded like five years ago. Some of the parts are even older than that. Some of the parts are like X79. All right, let's build behind here so that nobody can see anything. <laughs> he fit. <laughs> We've already done all the testing, of course. We've tested the $3,000 W3175X which technically by extension, I guess, means that we've tested the, the Mac Pro, because the Mac Pro is the new socket. It's a different CPU. It's actually a slower CPU than this 28 core monster. Oof. Yeah. We've also <laughs> tested Threadripper, second and third generation. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. So your old workstation had four 980s mm -hmm. and a six core X, I think it was an X99, an X99 CPU, it's like the six core, whatever that model is. It's like an i7-5780, I don't know. does that make any sense? It was from a time when pretty much all of the VFX stuff was just running on GPU only. Mm -hmm. And now we've got a good mix of CPU and GPU, so six cores doesn't do it. But it was also a really nice custom loop that was never cleaned. Maybe for almost 10 years? <laughs> He's bringing in a machine that was last upgraded like five years ago. Some of the parts are even older than that. Some of the parts are like X79. But it's a full tower, Corsair, monster case, dual radiator. It's got four GTX 980s in them. They're using these for rendering. And uh, they basically gave him one because it died. And the reason it died, we found out, is because the radiator's in junk. We're trying to resuscitate this thing. Yeah, it's a Frankenstein build. It's almost like somebody neglected the crap out of it. Who did that? <laughs> Who did such a terrible thing? I was given this as a gift, and it was a terrible gift, <laughs> but in the best way. We spent how long cleaning it? <laughs> oh, nice. I already used a bunch of vinegar. and the blocks are full of junk and the couple of video cards literally died because one of them has bad VRAM because of the heat. Two of them won't post and the other one is clocking really weird. So four GPUs dead. We, uh, we tried to reuse some fittings. That was perhaps a mistake. Yeah, it started leaking. That uh, radiator sprung a leak, required a little bit of soldering. Wouldn't, something something adventures. It was the quick release fittings. The quick release fittings, they were suspect. I said they were suspect from the beginning, but it was like, ah, we'll probably be, you know, let's use them. Let's, that was a mistake. Yeah. I shouldn't be doing that, should I? Nope. Yeah, it's done that quite a bit. Yeah, the quick release is not quick releasing, but that's why you got new ones. But luckily we caught it. You were able to get it switched out without there being the complete monsoon inside of here, which was a huge concern for a moment. I should point out too that not doing maintenance is not Justin's fault. They're, they were his work machines, and it was like nobody told him they had to do maintenance on a loop. I mean, I feel like somebody should have known that. Yay for solder. But you've also got a quick release now. You didn't have yes. that before. In the secret door on the back, when it comes time for cleaning or whatever, you can literally just, just and it's a new quick release. We didn't recycle this one. So the idea with this extra tubing is we come out and around and loop over and back in some of this extra space. But this quick release here will make it a lot easier to work on the pump because all your return water, you can just use the pump to basically pump everything out of the system. And then gravity will do the rest because you can just lower that below the, like you can like just drop it in the floor and then your loop will be better. Before we had like the main artery running up here, 
but we're actually using the, just the, the main output now to run directly into the CPU. Brilliant! We've got, a, we've got some odd choices in the build. Like these are old server drives, but they're four terabytes. That's, uh, that's gonna be interesting. You know what's also amazing? I'm pretty sure this is just a CD-ROM drive in here and not even a CD burner. <laughs> I just wanted to call that out. It's you, nasty. You got a bunch more of these machines at work, which means that uh, your studio is probably gonna buy a lot of Threadripper. You're welcome, AMD. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is PCI Express storage. And so we had a unique opportunity. We had these uh, four, four terabyte Intel NVMe drives, which were available for less than $100 a terabyte. And these are not like PCI Express 4 SSDs are going to be faster, at least initially, but these don't slow down. These are triple level cells. These are engineered to last a lifetime. And they still have two years, two and a half years of Intel warranty left. And new, they were like $3,000 and you can still buy these on Newegg for about $2,000. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm still pretty noob level when it comes to PC building. And when you mentioned that, it was just like hitting me in the face and just going around. Like I had no idea what you were talking about. But we're not just going into this willy nilly because I'm some sort of crazy Threadripper evangelist, whatever. Although maybe that's true too, I don't know. So I did a lot of homework before Justin actually got here doing what's called, well, what I would call probably application profiling. So looking at his programs, a lot of them you probably never heard of, uh, but one of them that you probably have heard of is Adobe After Effects. But Adobe After Effects on its own really isn't that interesting. It's the plugins that go in After Effects. The After Effects plugins, they can use CUDA acceleration. Some of them use a lot of CPUs, some of them don't. After Effects on its own doesn't render fast. It just doesn't. You have to use something else to accelerate it because it's super multi-threaded. With After Effects, you really want to render one frame at a time, but you can take a sequence that's, you know, 600 frames long and break that up into jobs. And that's what we did with Threadripper to test the 24 and 32 core Threadripper. What we tend to do, which is a little bit more unique, uh, you know, differentiating it from other uh, professionals is our workload is a three to four minute all CG piece. So we needed a solution that gave us the ability to render that out uh, faster because straight out of After Effects, you're looking at like hour and a half, two hours. I mean, there have been times where we'd hit the render button and it'd say like eight hours and like 50 <laughs> minutes. And it got out of control and Render Garden was the first opportunity that we had to speed that process up. Render Garden is the name of the software that does that. Now, Render Garden's website advertises a two to three X speed up, but by systematically looking at where the bottlenecks were, memory, IO, VRAM, because when you run out of VRAM, things get shuffled from your GPU to main memory. Now that might be something that can be optimized in the driver, I'm not sure. I actually reached out to NVIDIA about this. But for this test setup for the system that we're using now, we are just using a GTX 1080 Ti. But we found the shelf. Three minutes is what you can do with a GTX 1080 Ti with about five to 10 instances of Render Garden, depending on how complex your After Effects project is and how much CUDA your After Effects project needs. And it depends, it's, it is very, very project specific. So it depends on the plugins you're using and, and everything else. Well now, I remember us working on some really old projects way mm -hmm. back in the day. And there was a checkbox in After Effects, which is render multiple frames at once. That's gone. That was gone before, almost before I left. <laughs> so that's how long it's been like kind of gone. So we've got a we've got a we've got a, a system to build, but everything is in balance in this system based on your specific workload, like your specific projects. Mm -hmm. I mean, with Render Garden, that 50 minute job immediately was like 20 minutes on Threadripper, and then with Render Garden, it was like what three and a half. Yeah, and we never really found out what the what the shelf was on that. <laughs> well, we found the shelf <laughs> in later testing. Got it down to a minute and 22 seconds with 16 instances of Render Garden with a GPU that had 24 gigs of VRAM. That GPU, the Titan RTX. This is not always gonna be the case. Like, it depends on your project and the plugins that you're using. I mean, even a mid-grade GPU may be sufficient for doing stuff. You might remember some of the testing that we did with Epos Vox. DaVinci Resolve scaled perfectly to two GPUs. You add in that third GPU, you weren't really getting scaling. After more analysis, it turns out that more scaling meant that we needed more CPUs. When we did that testing, Threadripper 3000 wasn't available. But now DaVinci, with three GPUs, actually does scale a little better. What a day. It was a day. <laughs> it only rained like five times. That last one was pretty bad though. <laughs> it was pretty intense. Well, the crazy thing is that, 
you know, as you're, you know, with your old workstations, it was super important. I mean, you've got a, a 300 and no, it's like a 420 and a 480 millimeter radiator or something crazy. It's like triple 140s up here and quadruple 120s down there. And uh, and right now it's all going to the CPU. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and the CPU doesn't really get that hot. It's, it's, no. it's nuts. But we routed uh, a cable. So you'll be able to insert your GPUs between, so the CPU goes directly to the top radiator and then the top radiator goes to the bottom radiator now. But you'll be able to insert your GPUs when you get your blocks mm -hmm. just with this cable. So this cable runs down, you'll be able to put a quick release in that and you know, one or two GPUs. Titan RTXs, but for now, 2080 Ti. But the thing that blows my mind is we did the tests and on this loop with the old 980s, uh, this system is running circles around four 980s. And four 980s really, they're not a slouch, but it just goes to show you if you don't do maintenance on your loop, um, you're going to have worse performance than even probably a single 980. Yeah, it was pretty much hobbled. And this is the, the 24 core. Just imagine, right. it's 32 core and 64 core. I can't even fathom. Through, what, all, what all did we run through? Crystal Dismark. Yeah, Crystal Dismark, but uh, you also did uh, Octane. I did Octane Bench, we did Crystal Dismark, and then we did uh, the new Puget Bench, which is still in beta but still gave me some good numbers comparatively to any machine that we have at work right now. Was it Puget Bench that was like over 3,000? Yeah, it was a 3,800 3, or something like that, somewhere in that range. And the next best machine that you've got at work, which is not super old, was like 600? A 1,600. 1,600. Something like that. Yeah. Something around that range. I mean, it's in beta and those numbers might be fluctuative, but still, that's well, pretty. Well, Cinebench R20. Right, well, yeah. <laughs> The new $56,000 Mac Pro, the best score you're going to get on a Mac Pro is like 9,600. Let's call it 10K. We'll be generous and say 10K. This thing out of the box was 14K. Stock. Stock. I love working on real world projects like this. It's so, it's, it's great. And there are so few people out there that will actually sit down and look at what your problem is. It's like, let's just keep throwing hardware at it until the problem is solved. It's like, no, that's not necessarily the case. I mean, with these kinds of projects, when, especially when you're talking about like VFX rendering, the bottleneck could be anywhere. It could be GPU, it's usually not. It could be memory, storage, it could be software. Like your software, it's like, okay, this effect that you're doing, let's just bake that into the render and then re-import that footage because every time you do anything with this footage, it's recalculating that. This is never changing. It doesn't need to be done that way. This is a workflow problem. This is not really a problem with your hardware or anything else. But it's also interesting because the VFX industry has changed dramatically, at least in terms of hardware, the last four or five years. And uh, one thing that I keep realizing is that I probably ought to be doing a lot more rendering and working at the same time, which I kind of have completely like gave up <laughs> on that reality. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, no, what? No, you can't. It sounds like I probably can. Yeah. And so I'm going to have to kind of change that part of my... <laughs> part of my uh, designing phase. I think uh, we might see in a year or two that, uh, you know, in groups of artists that are working together, uh, probably will be able to do the network rendering and just run it at a low priority with no ill effects. That would be awesome. So it's like during the work day, when, you know, Bob needs to use your machine for rendering, if you're not otherwise rendering something, all the machines in the work group are rendering. But if you've got a job you need to render, you know, your machine's gonna render in the background as well as everybody else's. And if everybody's got something to render in the background, everybody's gonna get background rendering. But the software for that is is pretty much there, but it hasn't really, mm -hmm. like like you, people trying to do that workflow found that it didn't work, but now it can. So like what's going on on the screen over here where you're at, I have a really, really crazy heavy scene with a lot of like layers and, and uh, glows and plugins and different, like something that's like basically really heavy, high raster, I want to test that file because that's going to give me all the information I need because I'm really good at running a computer down pretty quickly and this is a really good you know work case example so it looks pretty fluid to me yeah was and this was this the file on your other computer that was like two FPS uh yeah it is a huge ever-changing ecosystem and it is very difficult to uh, say yes this computer is always going to run really well for this particular application. Uh, I think that it's probably true that when your old machine was built or it's so GPU heavy, it was true that GPU acceleration was all the rage and that works really well, but now it's a mix of CPU and GPU. Mm -hmm. And to get the most, to have not 
uh, no bottleneck in your workflow. You have to have an insane CPU and an insane GPU setup. And that you can even do this with the you know relatively consumer grade 2080 Ti is just kind of bananas. Right. The next big thing, honestly, is probably hybrid memory, where the CPU can access the GPU's memory more directly with less overhead and vice versa. So thank you again, Justin, for joining me. Thank you for it, <laughs> dealing with this. <laughs> any messages for anybody in internet land? Don't try to recycle a rad. Don't try to recycle a rad and don't try to siphon <laughs> a, a hose when it's got cleaner. <laughs> I, like, uh, I like the taste of mayo in the morning. I could, you could smell it. You could smell it. it was, uh... <laughs> Smells like we're making pickles. <laughs> Threadripper is so insane. It's such an incredible, like, it's not just Threadripper. It's like Threadripper Plus. It's really unlocked the GPU horsepower. It's just, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I'm going to stop rambling now. I'm Wendell. <laughs> this is level one. I'm signing out, and I'll see you later. It's like a butt flap. Yeah. It's a, it's a buff lap to make cleaning easier. And that's a terrible mental picture. Absolutely. Terrible. That's, a, that's all about terrible mental pictures.